All right, for this lesson, we're going to jump right into Thevenin theorem. Now, what is Thevenin theorem? Thevenin theorem, the official definition, it's a, a linear active resistive network which contains one or more voltage or current sources that can be replaced by a single voltage source and a single resistance in series. By simplifying down a circuit to a pair of open leads, the engineer may recalculate the change in the circuit parameters based on the resistance load. The overall goal of Thevenin theorem is to simplify the complex circuit to the left to a very simple single voltage source and resistor in series to the right. That way you can measure the parameters like for example current of a load between points A and B or wherever the points you pick on a circuit. To exercise Thevenin theorem, it's very simple, consists of three steps. Step one, we're going to move the resistive load or the component in the area you wish to measure. Second, we're going to find the overall resistance of the circuit. By doing this, you're going to short the voltage sources and open all current sources. From there, it'd be equivalent of you actually taking a ohm meter to the two points you picked and measure the resistance. Second, once you restore the circuit back to normal, go ahead and reinstall all the voltage sources and current sources. And then you're going to find the V Thevenin, or voltage, of the circuit using basic circuit analysis. All right. For this example, we're going to start off with a very simple one. For this example, this is going to have only one voltage source and three resistors. Uh, two of the resistors will be actually part of the circuit and the third resistor will be our load resistance, the, which will be the 5 ohm resistor as you see here between points A and B. So, referring to the rules that we came up with earlier, first thing we're going to do is actually remove the load. So, let's go ahead and remove that 5 ohm resistor, and it's going to have a circuit that looks like we have here. So all we did was just erase the load resistance, nothing more. So step one, complete. Step two, find our Thevenin. By finding our Thevenin, we would have to short our voltage sources and open our current sources. Since we don't have any current sources, all we have to do is short our voltage source here. So actually I'm going to do a very cheesy way of shorting it. And there we go. Very simple. So all we did is just go ahead and remove the voltage source and put a short in its place. Alright. Next step. Perform your measurements between A and B of your resistance as if you had a meter hooked between points A and B. So if from this direction looking in, we have 4 ohms and parallel with 3 ohms. Very simple. So using our ohms law, it's going to be 1 over 3 ohms plus 1 over 4 ohms. And obviously the whole circuit is 1 over the <clears throat> resistance values, and that will give our, our Thevenin. Final value of our Thevenin being and 1.71 ohms. So right there on step two, very simple, we found our Thevenin. Alright, let's go ahead and find V Thevenin. By doing this we'll go ahead and restore our circuit back to normal with the voltage source unshorted. So everything's back to normal with the exception of the load resistor. We still want that removed because we're still performing the uh, Thevenin theorem analysis. So let's go ahead and look at this circuit as if we had a meter between points A and B. So if you're measuring the voltage between points A and B, it's the same voltage between the actual 4 ohm resistor we have right here. So we just have to find the voltage at the 4 ohm resistor and that will give us the voltage between A and B. So using a voltage divider rule, we can take our 10 volt voltage source and actually do 4 ohms over 3 ohms plus 4. Plugging this in the calculator, it's going to give us a value of 5.71 volts. So very simple, V Thevenin equals 5.71 volts. 
And again, I'll put it over here just aside for a second, just so we can clean up this circuit. And again, please excuse the handwriting. And we'll go ahead and clean this up. So all we want to do is actually clean up the circuit. So now we have a Thevenin equivalent. Final answer comes out to be a voltage source of 5.71 volts and an R Thevenin of 1.71 ohms. So when the engineer actually implements or reinstalls his load resistance, again, I'm going to cheat just because it's easier. We'll go ahead and paste that back in. He can find his actual current value through the whole circuit. So now you can see how much current is running through the 5 ohm load. So if he actually changed it out to a 15 ohm load or 100 ohm and so on and so on, he can actually determine the, <clears throat> the actual current flowing through it. All right, so now that we finished a simple example, let's go on to another one. This one is slightly more trickier, but we're going to go ahead and overcome it. First step, we're going to remove our load. So just like last time, I already had a circuit pre-made with the load removed. So points A and B are now open. All right, step two, we're going to find R Thevenin. We're going to short our voltage sources and open our current sources. So just like last time, I'm going to cheat just a little bit. We're going to move both our voltage sources, and I'm going to create a short. And obviously, when you're taking the test, you can use your chicken scratch just to save yourself time. But since this is a video, we're going to go ahead and make it look a little prettier. All right. So now, if we actually had a me ohm meter and put it between points A and B, we would read resistance in this direction. And that would actually look as if the 10k ohm resistor and the 5k ohm resistor are in parallel. And then the 7k ohm resistor is in series with it. Now plug in chugging this in a calculator will give us something that looks similar to this. 5k plus 10k, and again these to the negative ones, parentheses, not for my k's, and then plus 7k. So that would give us an R Thevenin of, looks like we have 10.33K. All right, so that was a pretty simple plug and chug. So I'm going to put our R Thevenin over to the side over here so we can continue on and find the V Thevenin. So that's 10.33K. All right, so let's clear out this circuit. All right, to find V Thevenin, I want to jump right in, same thing as last time, and restoring our voltage sources, and actually just still removing the uh, resistive load. All right, now this is where it gets trickier. What trips people up is right in this area right here. Because they actually, some people actually believe that, hey, I have to account for voltage drop at 7K. Wrong. There is no current flowing through this loop. There's no current thrown, uh, going through points A and B, which means since there's no current going through 7K ohm resistor, there's no voltage drop. So same thing like the last problem. We're going to find the voltage between the 5K ohm resistor. That's our primary goal. First thing we're going to do is find the actual voltage between these two points. And then since the 5 volt power supply is actually in series with this particular voltage, we would add them together. So they would look similar to this. So V7 would equal 10 volts. Now this is our voltage divider rule. So this is going to be, I'm trying to make it look a little, a little pretty if I can, 5k over 5k plus 10k. And then we're going to add this one power supply. So it's going to be plus 5 volts. Again, when you did the R Thevenin, you already took into account the 7K ohm resistor. But since there's no current th flowing through it, you don't have to worry about trying to do the math when actually finding V Thevenin. In fact, for the sake of argument, you can actually act like the 7K ohm resistor is not even there. So again, just to keep it simple. Just remember, if there's no current flowing through it, it's not applicable.
So that would be the equivalent if you had to look at it from an engineering standpoint. Using our calculator, we're going to plug and chug. And that would give us a final answer of 8.33 volts. Okay, same thing as last time. We're going to put our 8.33 volts to the side so we can clean all this up. So our final circuit is going to have a 10.33 K ohm resistance and an 8.33 volt power supply. Just that simple. Again, what usually trips people up is if there's no current going through it, it's not applicable.